Okay, so last week I talked about the reality of heaven, so this kind of ties into the reality of heaven. It's from the Village Church, um, not Matt Chandler, another guy, I could get you his name later, it's called Broken Spirit, so essentially he talks about how you stay encouraged, how you stay motivated, how you stay hopeful of the reality of heaven when tragedy comes your way, so Um, we're going to pick up right in the middle of his sermon, about five minutes long. Please help Addie. Please heal her. He said, it's super bad, God. (laughs) We need to work on his bedside manner. (laughs) Then he prayed for me, prayed for my wife, prayed for Addie. He said, God, I pray that this never happens again. Look, I don't tell you that to tell you that I've got like perfect Christian kids. Earlier in the day, he threw a fire truck at her head. (laughs) Or maybe it was an ambulance, which is more ironic. I mean, parenting is wins and losses, right? At the end of the day, you know, we made it. She got stitches and the kids are in bed and I'm sitting there talking with my wife. And, and, and as we reflect on the day, we both went back to that moment, his prayer. And just, that was, that was special. It was special that, that that's what came out of him. In that, I, I know that it was a small scale panic moment for the Roller family. But in that small scale panic moment, I got to see things coming out of him. I got to know him in ways that I would not have gotten to had the afternoon just been normal. Now, aren't your meaningful relationships like that? I mean, the people that mean the most to you, you've been through something with them. I mean, I hear story after story, man, yeah, we got some really bad news, but when we got that bad news, gosh, my wife was a rock, and I saw her in ways that I never thought I would see her, or, or man, we, I was just in the pit, but when I was in there, there was a friend who just stayed in there with me till I got out, and I saw things coming out of that friend that I would not have gotten to see if things were normal. It's those, it's those moments of clarity about your relationships that often come by way of trial and pain. And that's what God does. God says, look, I know it hurts, but I'm going to posture you to see me and know me as the great I am. And that's what you get. That's the prize. That's the reward. So God is that light in the middle of the room that when all of the other lights are on, that light is easy to ignore. But when things start to go dark, that light is all you can see. And as things continue to darken around you, that light becomes brighter and brighter. And it ultimately becomes so beautiful that it not only makes the darkness bearable, it makes the darkness worth it. I mean, if Israel gets out of Egypt and they don't know God, they're still slaves just without the chains. But to know him, that's, that's the prize. That's the reward. What does this look like? I mean, like 21st century, how does this play out? A few years ago, I had a day in pastoral ministry that I'll remember for the rest of my days of pastoral ministry. I met with two men and a guy comes in and he had just lost his job. And gosh, he was mad. He was mad at his job. He was mad at his boss. He was mad at his coworkers. And and ultimately he was mad at God. And at the end of that meeting, he said, man, I just don't see why God would do this to me. There are so many things I wanted to do that I can't do now. You see what happened? Harsh reality shatters hopeful expectations. His cup gets knocked over. And what comes out? What comes out? He talks about a story, but it's not God's story. He talks about his story, all of my plans, all the things I wanted to do. And then he talks about God, not in ways that he knows him intimately, but in ways that makes it appear as though he's distant and can't be found. Why would he do this? And listen, I'm not saying that I would be in any better place. Really, I'm not saying I would respond any differently. I just don't know. I'm just telling you what happened. Because after that meeting, I drove to McKinney and I met with a man who's not a member of our church. He attends another church, but we just were meeting to get to know one another and he shares a story with me. And part of his story is one day his teenage daughter came home sick. And the next day she went to the doctor and by Friday she had passed away. No warning. And and as I'm sitting there processing this information, like scanning through my pastoral experience to try to offer something to say, 
He keeps talking. And I'm blown away by the words that come out of his mouth. Yeah, next, he keeps talking. He says, you know, she never dated and was never married. And I would have loved to walk her down the aisle. But I rejoice that the first husband to hold her was Jesus. He says it hurt. And it still hurts. But I know God in ways that you never will. And I would not change that. You see what happened? Some powerful stuff there. Um, kind of the whole theme of that is it's not about if tragedy happens in your life, it's when it happens in your life. And will you be ready for it? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have realistic expectations of heaven? Do you read your Bible? Do you know Jesus and his discipleship? And if you do, then that tragedy, you will be wearing the full armor of God and you will be prepared for it. It won't be easy, but at least you'll be geared up for it. And you will make it. You will make it. But if you don't, that tragedy is going to rip you apart. It's going to pull you down. It's going to take everything you've got, your heart, your strength, your mind, and Jesus protects that if you know him. He walks alongside you if you have a relationship with him. He'll speak truth to you, and he'll lift you up in supernatural ways that you didn't even know existed. And I just want to close with a verse from Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And it reads, And he said to them all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For who would ever save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there are some things standing here, some of you standing here, who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. And kind of what that is saying, I have my ESV out because this actually breaks down verse by verse. Um, when he says, come after me, that means to actually become a disciple, become somebody who is going to take on the divine challenge, opportunity, and right to spread the gospel. And then deny ourselves, it says, not simply to deny certain things, but denying personal control of your life. Take up the cross. What that means is you are making a commitment that will lead to rejection and even possibly death. That is what Jesus is requiring of us. And absolutely, it's a scary thing. Absolutely, we're putting our lives on the line. Absolutely, we're doing radical things to spread the gospel. But it is the most powerful truth anybody will ever know. It is perfect, supernatural, otherworldly love. And if we believe that there is a heaven and hell, which we all really do, then we have a divine responsibility to spread this word as we are commanded and as we're told. And if we start grasping all these things, and if we start living for the Lord, and we have a relationship with God, he is saying, you are going to have life and life to the fullest on this earth. And not only that, you won't taste death on this earth. That's what, how this closes. It says people are walking around this earth, and they have whiffs of death almost on a daily basis because they don't know Jesus. They don't know God. And the enemy is the king of this world. So he speaks all these untruths and lies to them that they've taken on as truth. So I just encourage you ladies to pursue a relationship with the Lord, whatever that may look like to you. Everybody's different. And just like you have a relationship with your mom or your dad or your daughter or your son, every relationship looks different, right? And that's how our relationship with the Lord works. It's not this thing we can fit inside the box. And he will protect you when tragedy comes, not if it comes, when it comes. And it won't be easy. It will definitely be hard, but at least you'll be prepared for it.